Downtown Tampa, completely empty. Interstate 4, heading to Orlando during rush hour, not a soul. MLK East to West, heading into the suburbs from the city, not a car in sight. What the crap is going on in Tampa, and where did all the people go? No, this is not from COVID. This is in 2024. This is what the city of Tampa looks like right now. Even downtown was empty, considering there was a freaking game. I couldn't even get a single Uber ride driving through the whole city and waiting in downtown for about an hour. Which means that there's literally nothing going on in Tampa. Now there was a game, and I'm going to drive you guys around downtown and you're going to see the people out and about for the game. But other than that one event, literally the entire city of Tampa was quite literally more empty than I've ever seen it. Even during COVID, it wasn't this bad. A lot of people are becoming disenchanted with Tampa. Now, a recent news report claims that Tampa is the fourth best job market in the entire country. Oh, there are so many jobs in Tampa that it's the fourth best economy in the entire country, according to some online magazine. But in reality, I couldn't get a single Uber ride during rush hour anywhere in Tampa, and that's after waiting around for about an hour. I got a ride from Clearwater into Tampa, and that's how I ended up in Tampa for the event. This person was going to the game, but I figured, crap, there's an event in town. I'm going to be getting a lot of riders. And then I realized that Tampa was surprisingly empty. Even the passenger who lives here pointed out on the way there how empty the city looked and how she's never seen Tampa this empty. So what's really going on? Well, a lot of people are disenchanted with the city of Tampa. They were told that there were jobs in Florida, that they were going to do great. There was one YouTuber for all these years that people from New York have been flocking to Tampa that's been telling you guys, hey, this isn't a place you want to end up. Tampa has always been one of the most miserable cities in Florida, but the New Yorkers and Connecticut and New Jersey's flock to Tampa like never before. And all these ponytail New York realtors made a lot of money getting other New Yorkers and Connecticut's to move to Tampa, while me telling you the truth, nobody listened to me. Now you're starting to realize, huh, there aren't any jobs in Tampa. But not only are there not any jobs in Tampa, but even worse, they're still publishing articles saying that it's one of the best job markets in the entire country. In reality, the economy here is so bad that you can't even catch an Uber ride during the rush hour because people are not doing anything or maybe because there isn't even enough money for it. Perhaps, even worse, so many people are driving Uber in Tampa that you can't find customers because there's so many people needing an extra dollar doing that as a gig. I was surprised to find that there are actually homeless camps right in the heart of Tampa. Yeah, look at this. There's literally people camping out right in downtown Tampa. Look at their homeless camps, and there's people living inside the trees, and there are the big buildings in the skyline. This is downtown Tampa. There's literally people living in the bushes in downtown Tampa. And St. Petersburg didn't look that much better. I've been in St. Petersburg in the past, and on this trip through St. Petersburg, I personally noticed a lot of people panhandling. But the St. Petersburg video will be a different one. People are realizing that the beaches in Sarasota and Bradenton are better, and they're flocking to those beaches, leaving the beaches in Tampa completely empty. And that is a problem for the city of Tampa, because a lot of investment went in, right after COVID, thinking that they were going to amp up the city and that this city was going to get a complete freaking revival. This is the downtown of a city in Florida in spring. This isn't Nebraska. This isn't Oklahoma. This is a city in Florida. A city in Florida during an event. A game. Unbelievable. Being familiar with the state of Florida and the city of Tampa, I have personally never been impressed by the city of Tampa. Anybody that's from Florida knows it's actually a pretty miserable city. And the prices that people are paying for real estate 
in the city of Tampa really don't make any sense. You could actually buy a house in Tampa for something like $113,000 when the same house in Naples would have been three or 400000 many years ago. But now the city of Tampa is on par with the city of Naples. But there's a difference. Just today, there were shootings in Tampa. Ybor City, Tampa's second downtown, recently had shootings. And it wasn't random. It was, in fact, gang-related. Two gangs from two opposite sides of towns met each other, and a bunch of young kids did the unthinkable in a crowded place, which means that now people in the Tampa area are afraid to go downtown because the gangs in the city are feuding with each other. Something like what's going on in Memphis, Tennessee, not on the same level, but the people in Tampa are more sensible than the city of Memphis where they're used to stuff like that, and people are literally afraid of going out in Tampa despite the strong police presence. People are not going to risk being in a crowd when every time there's a crowd, the local gangs have a go at it. Keep in mind that many of the people that moved to Tampa came from the New York metropolitan area, one of the safest metropolitan areas. The city doesn't have any type of gang or gun violence on the levels that Florida has. New York City is very strict and their laws actually work. The homicide rate in New York City is one of the lowest of any large cities in the country, by far lower than Los Angeles, Miami, Chicago. Their laws actually work. There are not too many guns on the streets. Florida, until recently, had great gun laws. The governor changed the gun laws, and just like I told you was going to happen, the homicide rates in Florida are now racing to be on track with the rest of the South because you are now putting gun laws in Florida that mimic states like Alabama, Louisiana, which just happen to have the highest homicide rates in the entire country. Thus, people that are moving to Florida are coming from New York and they know what it's like to live in a safe city and they're terrified of all the gun violence that happens in Tampa, Florida. They are getting ready to leave because they're scared. They heard on the news that New York and California were dangerous and Florida was safe, but they never actually looked at statistics to see what the homicide rates were in the cities they were moving to. In many cases, there were more than double places like New York City where they were coming from. But now they're finding out that gun violence in Florida is also on the rise because the new laws simply don't work. The state of Florida had really good gun laws for being in the South, which kept the homicide rate in the state of Florida far less than any of the adjacent states in the South. But now Florida is going to start to compete with other states in the South for homicide rates being among the highest in the country. Who the crap wants to deal with that, especially when they're coming from a place like New York City where the homicide rate is less. These people know what safety is, they're seeing violence, and they're afraid. They were expecting Florida to be better because they believed the rhetoric, but they didn't actually do any freaking research. Oh, 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 but every last one of them is a self-proclaimed real estate investment guru. These individuals think they're literally gods. If you listen to them talk, they are just, they know about investing, and they know about money, and you should listen to them. I know what's in your real estate portfolio, young man. They're all gods of real estate investing. Oh, there are self-proclaimed investors. What happened to that boy? Self-inflated egos. They know everything. You can't tell them any better. Their homeowner's insurance and property taxes now require a full-time job, something between six to twelve thousand dollars a year. That's a part-time job, at least right there. And that's just for a normal-sized house. If they got a big house. They're going to find themselves literally looking for a full-time job just to keep up the overhead on their property. But there's a problem. There's no jobs in Tampa. You can't even get a freaking Uber ride in Tampa. But they thought there were jobs here. Why did they think there were jobs here? Because they knew everything. Uh, wait, wait. And they were listening to Fox News. Somebody was recently telling me that they were at the gym and the TVs went out for like 20 minutes and there was customers crying because they couldn't watch Fox News while they were in the gym. How can these people survive for 20 minutes without listening to Fox News telling them everything they need to hear and know about life? And then there's the ones who I haven't made any money during this administration. Well, last year was the best year I ever had until I got hurt. But then, you know, if I hadn't got hurt, this year would have been even better. But the reality is 
These are self-proclaimed gurus. They get everything from the internet. As long as somebody on YouTube tells them what to do, that's what they're doing. And they invested their money thinking they know everything into a city that as far as everybody in Florida knows is one of the most miserable cities in the state. I mean, it's not as bad as Jacksonville, but come on, Tampa's not really the best city out here. I mean, it's not on par with Naples. It's not even on par with Bradenton. La madre que los parió. I mean, you know things are bad in Tampa when all the Puerto Ricans left to Orlando and all the Cubans are either in Bradenton, Hernando, Pasco, Polk. Just in the last few months, like three or four Cuban food trucks have popped up in Sarasota and Bradenton because all the Cubans are leaving Tampa because they can't make enough money to survive. I had a good laugh as I'm preparing my GoPro and getting ready to record. There's a homeless guy with one of those green garbage cans from Waste Management. And you could tell he had just stolen this garbage can because he was like on a full throttle run through downtown Tampa with this garbage can handing off to his homeless camp with his newfound garbage can, which I thought was just hilarious. I mean, here's a homeless guy running through downtown with a garbage can that he found on the side of the road. He's like, yep, this is going straight inside my homeless camp. Man, I might even sleep inside this mug. I don't know what his plans were for the garbage can, but it was just hilarious to see this homeless guy leaving the scene of a crime with his garbage can, very eager to get away from downtown Tampa where there was police officers. But the point being, the amount of homelessness and panhandling in this area, the fact you can't even get a freaking Uber ride, the fact that the Cubans and Puerto Ricans, which had been in Tampa forever, are starting to leave Tampa because they just can't make enough money Hello, these are all indications that something's going on here. And a lot of people are saying, well, it's just because people can't afford to live in the city. No, these Cubans had their houses paid off. They've been there since the 90s. These are people who have their houses paid off and they're leaving not because their houses or mortgages are too expensive because they're paid off properties. They're leaving because they can't make enough money to live. That is the real situation in Tampa that established communities like the Cubans and Puerto Ricans are leaving the heart of Tampa because they can't make enough money. All the while, here's out-of-towners moving in like crazy, thinking that somehow in the future, they're going to get a job to pay for their properties. Because they thought that they were going to make money in their investments, but a lot of them are saying that in the last few years, they haven't been able to make any more money on investments. Oh, they're going to have to get real jobs now, aren't they? But... They can't get jobs in Tampa. They're getting jobs back in New York. Now that I'm doing this Uber driving thing, I'm talking to people. I'm listening to their conversations that they have. And I've had just this week that I started Uber three people who are telling me that they are moving back to New York because they got a job offer up there and they can't make enough money to survive down here. People are getting job offers back up north. They just can't do it here. And all along, here was this YouTuber telling you guys I probably wouldn't touch the city of Tampa, but who the crap listened to me? The wrong gangster meets the wrong gangster in downtown or Eber City, and they're shooting it out, bro. Tampa has real gangs, and that's something that I've been telling you guys for a while now, that Tampa actually has real gangs. They have a real gang problem here in Florida. This part of Tampa is just full of gangs not just tampa i mean like the suburbs of tampa have gangs not even the city the suburbs have gangs and that used to not be a problem because everybody stayed in their hoods but now with people rearranging throughout the whole city because they can't afford it anymore you're starting to have gang disputes left and right sometimes those things happen in downtown freaking scary maybe if you've lived in florida your whole life or if you lived in the south you're used to stuff like that but these people from new york they're not used to that they're not going to live in a place where these types of things happen. Also, it's not just the, the fact there's homeless people in Florida. Crap. I went to California and I noticed they're homeless people. Well, they're sleeping at night. The homeless people in Florida are out thugging, dumps to dive, and they're doing it all at night. It's a whole different vibe out here. New Jersey's, Connecticut's, and New York's, like I said, are now disenchanted with Florida. And they're not going to find any jobs in Florida because in Florida, we have a little problem, and it's the oversaturation of people who have degrees and experience. This is a problem that I've been talking about on my channel for a while. You guys remember when I lived in Naples, Florida, I talked about this topic a lot. The average Florida resident goes to apply at a restaurant, and they can't even get the server job because... There's a lot of people who have a lot of degrees, a lot of education. All these people that come down here are fairly well educated. 
the people that are from Florida don't have as much education. Because again, cities like New York, San Francisco, bigger places, higher incomes require more education. People from Florida don't have education. So you have a problem where the local population is completely uneducated, but the people that are moving here are kind of overqualified for jobs, if jobs existed. The only real viable industries in Florida are tourism, and every single day in the state of Florida, it's getting difficult for the regular person because now the insurance companies have what I call a show code on the state's policymakers. Over the last year, every single piece of legislation that has been signed in Florida has been signed to put a show code on the regular person and make it better for the insurance companies and other large corporate interests while dearly screwing the people of Florida and that includes the middle class. Since literally all legislation in the state of Florida has been hijacked by insurance companies and higher corporate interests, there really isn't any space for the middle class to have any say. And they're realizing, hey, we're getting screwed left and right. When we came here, we thought we were going to get a tax incentive. We thought there were incentives to move to Florida. But now they're realizing there's not incentives to move to Florida. There's actually liabilities. And once again, wasn't there a YouTuber telling you this whole thing a long time ago? On top of that, they're finding out that people in Florida are just outright crazy and radical. They thought that, like most people who relocate to Florida, their politics are a certain way, but their living lifestyle really isn't that. They're only doing that for tax incentives and other monetary incentives that come with their tax bracket. But now they're realizing... All these people are freaking nuts. They really are doing some crazy radical things. Like, here's a rational state with a rational gun law. Let's get rid of the only gun law that is working for the entire South and make the safest state in the South be like the rest of the states in the South. Yeah, yeah, that makes perfect sense. And that's just one example. Then they went after illegal immigrants. I don't know if you know these, but these people are coming from New York City, a city built by immigrants. The people from New York City, they understand that the labor force is always illegal immigrants. Now, people in Florida don't seem to understand that. They cry about how they can't afford housing, but then they're deporting the people who build the housing. Como basura. But these people from New York, they're from New York. They're not stupid. They understand how both sides of this thing work, and they understand that, yeah, you got to have somebody to mow your lawn because I'm not doing it as a U.S. citizen, buddy. Insurance. Check. Homelessness. They're going after the homeless people. They're going to start arresting homeless people for not going to shelters. Wait, there's a problem. There are no shelters. Wait, there's no free shelters. They have to pay to go into the shelters. $15 a night. Do you think these people that are homeless in a wheelchair with mental problems are going to come up with $15 a night? Half the time, they go to sleep hungry because they can't come up with $3 for a freaking McChicken. But soon, they're going to be going to jail, in theory. Because in Florida, everything is... In theory, in theory, they were going to go after the illegal immigrants. Guess what? Who's still mowing the lawns along the beaches? Who's building the skyscrapers that are going up along the beaches right now? Every construction project in Florida, every lawn, a lot of these occupations, crap. I live in Manatee County, and the people who mow the sheriff's office are Guatemala, and I can almost guarantee you they don't have their papers. The county of Manatee, the county-owned properties are being mowed by people who are illegal. This is after SB 1718, which just goes to show that in Florida, they're not even making these laws to enforce them. They're just making these laws to make a statement and get publicity. We hate illegals. We hate the homeless. We hate you being able to afford your freaking house. Hey, we love insurance companies. That's my buddy right there. Look at this, guys. This is Interstate 4 in Tampa. It could be during the summer on a rainy Thursday night. This is a stretch of road that will literally take you an hour on a good day to get from downtown Tampa to Interstate 75. I did it in like 10 minutes. There was literally nobody on the highway. Where are the people? Well, the people are gone. And it doesn't seem like they have any interest of staying in the state of Florida. So now what? Are the prices going to reflect the fact that people are no longer interested? I doubt it. There's still people who bought properties in 2007, 2008, 2005 at the peak, and they've never been able to get $80,000 for a quarter acre in Lehigh Acres, 
and they're still holding on to those properties because they're hoping that one day they'll at least be able to get back what they invested. But here we are many years later and they still during this peak haven't been able to get more than $34,000 for pieces of land that they paid $80,000 in 2005 during the last recession bubble thingy. So here we are again going down and they weren't able to get it. The same thing could happen. A lot of these people could think that, well, I'm just going to hold on to these properties. So you're going to have all these people holding on to properties that paid way too much money, except for this time the overhead is literally going to kill them. Because newsflash, Florida has now become more expensive than New York and California. But did you know that if you take away the top 1% of earners, the average person in Florida makes less money than the average person in Alabama? Yes, yes, you heard me right. Well, these exclusive people from New York and Connecticut and New Jersey now make up about 15 to 20 percent of the population down here people's in their 40s and 50s well guess what it's the one percent that has money the two percent the three percent the four percent the five percent yeah they're part of the 99 percent too that's what these people don't realize see they think that they're almost one percenters but they don't realize they're still 99 percenters and in a state where the 99 percenters make less than people in alabama but real estate in a lot of these cities like Miami, it's starting to be on par of places like Los Angeles, San Francisco, and New York. Yeah, that's a little bit of a problem, isn't it? That's today's video. The city of Tampa is empty. There's no tourist. And there's no hope of finding a freaking job here. The only YouTuber who warned you about this before it happened, I kept telling you guys, Florida really isn't the place for jobs. When these people find themselves in a little bit of trouble, they're going to have a hard time. But nobody listened. They listened to the to the ponytail guys that moved here from New Jersey a few years ago. Now those guys, they really know what they're talking about. There must be something in their ponytail that teaches them something about real estate in Florida, even though they just moved here from New Jersey a few years ago, right? But like the guy on King of the Hill said, it might be time to tie the short hair on their head to the long hair on their butts and kick them down the road. Uh, from New York, eh? I, I bought an investment. What's in your real estate portfolio, son? That's what I want to know. If you don't have a real estate portfolio, I'm from New York. You know? I just, I'm going to open a cigar shop and a pizza place in Cape Coral. It's going to be between the pizza place and the cigar shop. It's going to have competition next door because I'm from New York. And Vinny, I'm going to retire in Florida. I'm going to open up a cigar shop and a pizza place. I'm a freaking genius. Nobody's thought about doing this yet.